welcome back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Sam Menzi, and we have your show for you today. First topic we'll be covering is going over the National League games of yesterday, then moving into the American League as well. Then after that, we'll be talking about the league lead in Cleveland Guardians and just their surprise season so far, and my overall thoughts on it. And last but not least, we'll be talking about some news stories around the league, just some general injury and transaction stuff, so we'll be going over that. Now, before we, do, before we go into the show, I would like to ask you to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read right in the air, please use the link gsmcpodcast.net. Really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get into the show today. All right, so as I said, first topic is going to usually is going to be what it usually is, recapping the baseball games of yesterday. Now, yesterday, uh, usually we start off with the American League games, not the National League, but wanted to switch it up a little bit and give some love to the National League, so we'll be starting off with them today. Uh, so the first game we have on the agenda is going to be a game from the late window, just as we started with yesterday, the Mets and the Giants. They are also playing right now as we speak. The game starts at 345. It is currently 331, so it'll be going on as the show is in progress so if anything extremely notable happens i'll probably talk about it in the last segment but i don't think so cardinals dimebacks lost from the ninth inning right now looks like the cardinals have that game one but dimebacks could always come back i assume so we we'll saying that as well but let's go into the national league games of yesterday the ones we are going to recap so mets giants of course starting off we had the giants beating them in the first game of the series yesterday so mets looking to take this game and avoid getting a series loss Bottom of the fifth, the scoring would open with a Tyler Estrada RBI single to score Mike Conforto to make it one nothing San Fran in the bottom of the fifth. And then in the same inning, Mike Yastrzemski would blow the game wide open with a two RBI single scoring Matt Chapman and Estrada to make it 3 nothing. Bottom of the seventh, Yastrzemski would come in clutch again with another RBI single, also again scoring Tyler Estrada to make it 4 nothing. And then a Lamont Wade Jr. RBI double would make it 5 nothing. In the top of the ninth, the Mets would get a run on the board with a DJ Stewart RBI ground out, but it would be the end as they would not come back after that, losing the game 5-1. to one. Now the Giants had on the mound Logan Webb, who, like usual, was absolutely phenomenal. Eight innings pitched, six hits, no one runs, one walk, four strikeouts, no home runs, 2-3-3 three, three ERA in the season. I mean, Webb has consistently showed over the past few years now that he is an ace in this league. He is one of the best pitchers in baseball, and he just continues to play like that. I mean, just an incredible, incredible player. He may not strike out a lot of guys. I mean, only four strikeouts over 80 last time, but he is a master at getting those ground balls and uh, inducing that. So just one of the best pitchers in baseball, and I think Giants fans are lucky to have him. For the Mets, they had Luis Severi on the mound. He went six innings pitch, giving up five hits, three run runs, no walk, six strikeouts. He was actually perfect through four innings, I believe. It might have been five, but I know it was either four or five. So a really strong start there. It kind of unraveled a little bit at the end, but I'd still say it was a really solid start. Six innings pitch, three run runs, you know, not the best, but I still think really solid. A 2 6 seven, a right now over the, oh, as a Met so far. I think he's had a really great season and been a really underrated pickup for the Mets, and I think it's worked out so far. So, yeah, good for him. And, you know, he's always, he always seemed like a really good guy, guy who's had a lot of fun playing baseball, so I'm happy for him. Next game we are talking about is going to be Cubs and Astros. Struggling Astros looking to get a win on the Cubs, who have been pretty great this season. Bottom of the first, Cody Bellinger would hit a two-run home run to open up the scoring early for the Cubs, making it 2 nothing. Then a Mike Talkman three-run home run, his first of the year, would make it 5 to nothing Cubs in the bottom of the first. So just a really great job jumping out in front early for this Cubs offense against the struggling Astros pitching staff. Top of the fourth, Yanner Diaz would hit an RBI double to score Kyle Tucker to make it 5-1. to one. Then a Jake Myers two, a solo shot, his third of the year, would make it 5-2. to two. So the Astros would get some runs on the board, but the Cubs would get some more insurance, hitting, making it 6-2 to two with a Nico Horner RBI ground out and a Mike Talkman solo home run, his second of the year and his second of the game. Really great job there to make it 7-2. to two. The Astros would not score after that, and the Cubs would end up winning this game 7-2. to two. So a really strong game by the Cubs offense, especially coming out early and scoring all those runs. Also, Mike Talkman is really, really great as well, so good job for him. For the Astros, they had on the mound J.P. France. He won five innings pitched, giving up five hits, five earned runs, four walks, six strikeouts, two home runs. So had a really awful first inning. After that, settled in, giving up no runs in four after that. But at the same time, still that rough first inning is not good at all and it just can't be excused so not a great overall start for jp france i'd say i think you need him and some of your other depth guys to really come in handy right now and really come in clutch with all the injuries you've had and they just simply are not doing that so as i said the astros have a lot of problems with their pitching staff and it doesn't look to be ending anytime soon 
seven and seventeen now. I mean, that's that's not something to play around with. For the Cubs, they had Jordan Wicks on the mound, the rookie. He went six innings pitch, giving up five hits, two run runs, no walks, four strikeouts, and a home run, having a four seven ERA on the season so far. Uh, for a guy who's making a fifth start of the year, you know, a guy who is going to be one of the future parts of this Cubs pitching staff, I think it was a solid start. I think six innings pitched, only two on runs for the Astros offense is really, really great. So good job there. I think I'm really high on him for the future. I think he's going to be really, really good. So definitely watching him, seeing what he can do. Next game we have is going to be Phillies and Reds. I feel like these teams have played each other a lot so far this season. So uh, just keep talking about it. In the top of the first, Alec Bohm would hit an RBI double to score JT or Muto to make a one nothing early. Then, Christian Encarnacion Tran in the bottom of the first would answer, would answer right back for the Reds, hitting an RBI double, his sixth of the year, to score Spencer Steer to make it 1-1. Bottom of the third, Encarnacion Tran would come in clutch again, hitting an RBI single to make it 2-1. So, really great game for him. Then, a Nick Martini, uh, then Nick Martini would reach on an error from Alec Bohm and would make it 4-1, to one, and a Santiago Espinal single would make it 5-1. to one. So great job by the, by the Reds' offense that inning to come in clutch. And it'll be all Reds from there as well, as in the bottom of the fifth, L.A. De La Cruz would hit his seventh home run of the year already, having a monster, monster season, uh, scoring Christian Encarnacion Strand, and then a Santiago Espinal home run, his first as a Red in his first of the season, to make it 8-1, to one, would essentially close it as the Reds would end up winning 8-1 to one and beating this really nice Phillies team. So even with injuries, the Reds have been really solid this season, really, really impressive, so good for them. For the Phillies, they had on the mound Christopher Sanchez. Three innings pitched, four hits, five, earned run, five runs, one only one earned, three walks, three strikeouts. So can't really blame him for that start, only one earned run over three. You'd like to see him go deeper, yes, but again, the only one earned. So I don't really think most of that start yesterday was his fault. It, was, it more seemed to be on the Phillies offense, who also made three errors in, in the game. So definitely need to improve that. For the Reds, they had on the mound Andrew Abbott. Four and a third innings pitch, two hits, an earned run, four walks, three strikeouts, and a 2-5-0 ERA on the season. So, um, you know, Abbott is going to be a guy that is going to get a lot more starts now that you have someone like Frankie Montas on the injured list. So definitely need to come in clutch, and that was a really good start there and uh, just a really good opportunity for him. Next game we have is an NL Central matchup with the Pirates and the Brewers. In the bottom of the first, Andrew McCutcheon would hit a solo home run his third of the year to make it one nothing Pirates uh, to open up the scoring really early. Second home run uh, in this series, back-to-back -back games uh, against his former team as well, so good job by Kutch there. Bottom of the sixth, Connor Joe would hit an uh, RBI single to make it 2 nothing. Top of the eighth, Gary Sanchez would hit a solo home run, his second as a Brewer, to make a 2-1, to one, but the Brewers would still end up losing 2-1 to one and would not score after that. So, low-scoring game here, only 10 entire hits in the game, only 3 for Milwaukee. So, good win by the Pirates and, uh, you know, beating their division rival. For the Brewers, they had on the mound, uh, excuse me, it is Tobias Myers, yes. Five innings pitched, four hits, an earned run, a walk, four strikeouts. Had a really solid start there against this good Pirates offense. I think any day of the week you take that. For the Pirates, they had Bailey Falter. He won seven innings pitch, three hits, an earned run, two walks, and eight strikeouts. 3-3-3 three, three, three ERA in the season. He's been really impressive so far, in my opinion. I think he's been a really great surprise for the Pirates. I did not expect Falter to do much when he got traded to the Pirates last year at the deadline, but he's been a really nice starter for them, filling in sometimes, just good depth. So, yeah, good for him, and just a good job so far. Next game we have is going to be Dodgers and Nationals. Scoring would open up in the bottom of the second after a Jacob Young RBI single from a bunt. That would score Ildemar Vargas. Top of the six, Kike Hernandez would tie up the game with a RBI single to make it 1-1. James Altman would then give the Dodgers a lead with a RBI double to make it 2-1 Los Angeles. Then a Miguel Rojas RBI single make it 3-1. And a Shohei Otani solo home run, his sixth of the year in the top of the ninth would put the icing on the cake as the Dodgers end up winning this game 4-1. to one. So the Dodgers just lost the series to the Nationals, obviously, so it's a, you know playing them again shortly after. Really nice start to get back out in front and win the series. You know The Nationals are not a great team, obviously, but th th apparently they could be the Dodgers' kryptonite per se. So good job by them to come in clutch and win the series. 
Dodgers had on the mound James Paxton, who was okay. Four and two-thirds innings pitch, five hits, and earned run through walks and a strikeout. You know, one run is good, but you definitely like to see him go deeper than four and two-thirds innings pitched, especially against a team like the Nationals. So uh, you want to see that for the future, definitely. The Nationals had on the mound Patrick Corbin. He went five and a third innings pitch, giving up three hits, no one runs, three walks, three strikeouts. So a really solid start there, honestly. I mean, five innings, five and a third innings pitched, no one runs against the Dodgers offense as well. I don't really think you can ask for much more than that for a guy like Patrick Corbin. So really solid start there. And if I was, I mean, if I was a Nationals fan, I'd be pretty excited with that start. So, yeah. Next game we have here for the National League is going to be Braves and Marlins. Uh, so, starting off this game now, scoring would open up in the bottom of the second with a Michael Harris RBI double to make it 1-0. Then a David Fletcher sacrifice fly would make it 2-0. Going to the bottom of the sixth, a Travis Darno sacrifice fly would make it 3-0. And then an Adam Duvall two-run home run would make it 5-0 Atlanta. So, yeah, I mean, just an onslaught for Atlanta there. Five runs. Marlins would only get three hits, so just an easy, quick game there for the for the Braves. They had on the mound Max Fried, who had a complete game shutout. Nine innings pitch, three hits, no run runs, of course, no walks, six strikeouts. An absolutely incredible start for Fried. He's had a pretty rough start to the season so far. Is playing up to his potential now. I see, and you know, I got, I got obviously a free agent next in the after the season. So I think any great start for him is going to make himself a lot of money. So a really good job there, and a really great start. The Marlins had on the mound Trevor Rogers, who was decent. Five and two thirds innings pitched, seven hits, three earned, one walk, four strikeouts. Just an okay start. Nothing to write home about, but could have been a lot worse playing the Braves offense. So, uh, we also we kind of have some not breaking news, but I take significant news that I just saw that just broke. Cubs outfitter Cody Bellinger has a fractured rib and is going on the injured list. And top prospect Pete Crow Armstrong is being called up. So that's uh, that's pretty significant, I'd say. Not something I was really expecting. I'm not really sure where Bellinger got that injury. I'll have to do more research, and I'll probably tell you either in the last segment if I have time to look at it in between or in tomorrow's show, but we'll see. But that is pretty significant news, I'd say. Bellinger going on the injured list and a top prospect like PCA getting called up. So that's definitely some news I do want to talk about. But... Um, We'll uh, we'll go to our we'll continue with the segment here, but just wanted to did want to mention that because I just did see it. So yeah, the next game we have here now is Arizona and St. Louis. Um, yeah, uh, bottom of the first, St. Louis would open up scoring really early with a Wilson Contreras solo home run, his third of the season, to make one nothing St. Louis. And after that, it will be all Arizona. Lourdes Gurriel, RBI single. Christian Walker, three-run home run. Gabby Moreno, RBI single. Randall Gritchick, RBI single. Paven Smith, RBI double. Kevin Newman, solo, two-run home run. And then a Paven Smith grand slam would make it 14-1 to Arizona. Just an absolute onslaught of offense for Arizona. I mean, wow, wow, wow. Paven Smith grand slam, of course, being the cherry on top. I mean, what a game for Arizona. The Cardinals had on the mound Stephen Matz, who of course was awful. Four and a third innings pitch, six hits, seven earned runs, three walks, four strikeouts. Just awful. Has not been good since coming to St. Louis, and I think we might see the end of his end of his time in St. Louis coming rather quickly, especially the rotation. I try to move him to a reliever now, see what he, if he has anything there. But it's obviously he's obviously not fit to be a starter at this point for St. Louis. Don Max had on the mound Tommy Henry, who went six innings pitched, five hits, and earned run a walk and, a, and six strikeouts, 5-5-5 five, five, five ERA in the season. Not great, and I think you definitely need him to be a little bit better. Sorry, uh, for overall for the season to be a little bit better, but that start was really nice. I think the Cardinals' offense is really good, and having a start like that I'd say is really important for where the Dimebacks are right now with the rotation depth and all the injuries they've had, so a really good job there. Next game we have is Padres and Rockies, an NL West matchup. Scoring would open up in the top of the first as Jay Cronenworth would hit an RBI single. Two scores, Xander Bogarts, make it 1-0. Xander Jerks and Profar sacrifice fly would make it 2-0. Bottom of the second, the Rockies would get a run on the board with a Nolan Jones RBI single to score Elise Diaz. But Luis Campusano would answer right back with an RBI double in the top of the third to make it 3-1. Then a Jackson Merrill RBI single would make it 4-1. Going to the bottom of the fourth now, Brendan Rodgers would hit a grand slam for the Rockies, getting them on top just like that, making it 5-4 to four Colorado. Really, really exciting moment there for Brendan Rodgers, his first home run of the year as well. 
Elfuris Montero would walk in a run with the bases loaded to make it 6-4, and an Ezekiel Tovar RBI single would ice the game for Colorado, making it 7-4, and them defeating their division rival Padres. So an unfortunate game for the Padres here. Pitching just did not come in clutch and would definitely let them down. They had on the mound Michael King, who was pretty bad. Three and two-thirds innings pitched, eight hits, four in runs, three walks, five strikeouts. So not great. Hopefully he can improve, but maybe it was just a sign of going to cores. So um, hoping it's not a long-term thing, of course. For the Car- for the Rockies, they had Ryan Feltner on the mound. Four innings pitched, ten hits, four in runs, two walks, four strikeouts. Not great, giving him ten hits, but at the same time, it is um, it is cores. So you don't really you take it with a grain of salt, really. And it is a Rockies pitcher, so. All right, so that was the end of our first segment here, talking about the National League games of yesterday, just recapping those. We go into our second segment, which is talking about the American League games. So, yeah, we go into that, and we'll see you after the break. So thanks, Sam. Bye. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world 